and self-publishing wasn't quite as prevalent and it still had a little bit of a stigma to it. And I started doing this research on what I would need to do to get a publisher. Well, you have to get an agent, you have to do query letters and it might take six months to a year and then another year for the agent to pitch it to a publisher. And I'm just way too impatient for that. So I'm like, no, I can do this myself. You know, I'm a colonel. I can handle this. So I set up my own publishing company just with the thought that I would do my own. And I had editors and, you know, cover artists, people that did the work for me. I'm not an expert in any of those things. So I hired people within my publishing company to do that. And then people just started coming to me and asking for help and seeing that I could do it. And then I just started taking on more and more offers until I finally retired from the Air Force and decided to do it full time. Okay. So for Blue Dragon Publishing, what services do you offer for authors? Well, I'm a hybrid publisher, and that is not the same as a Vanity Press, two totally different things. Okay. There's basically four different types of publishers. A Vanity Press is the one where you might as well just take it to Kinko's and print it yourself. I mean, it, they don't do anything for you except for print the book and get it to you. Okay. Then, of course, there's self-publishing, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that as long as you treat it as a business and go through the right steps and get an editor and don't try to do it all yourself. Mm-hmm. Then at the far end is the traditional, which is what I was describing with having to get an aid, trying to get one of the big ones in New York City where they pay for everything and the mm-hmm. And the author makes about 10%. Okay. So I'm a hybrid. So I'm in between self and traditional. And you do pay for services, but you make a lot more profit back in your royalties so that you make your money back on what you pay me. Okay. So I take care of everything, editing, formatting, ebooks, trying to uh, getting the best price on a printer, mm-hmm. you know, getting it up on Amazon, all those Library Congress copyright, you know, all the little things that you don't want to have to deal with. Gotcha. Great. And so when, when, so when an author comes to you, what's that, I guess, how, how does the submission process work? Do you, do they just send you a, a manuscript? Do they come with you with an idea and say, I, you know, I want to write this book, but I haven't written it yet. Or what, when do, do authors come to you in this process? It's pretty typical for most publishers that if if it is a fiction book, the book has to be already finished. And if it's a nonfiction book, they can usually apply with an idea. Okay. And for me, I have a form on my website and it's limited with the space because I want people to be succinct and think about the answers before they just pour out their heart to me. And I need to know what their goals are because If they want to be rich and famous, I'm probably not the one to go with. I'll be straight up, (laughs) you know, but if the goal is because you're writing something because you do talks a lot and you want to sell something in the back of the room, that's perfect for a hybrid or self-publishing. That's perfect. So I want to know what their goals are. So they fill out this form. And then if I'm interested, well, I answer no matter what. But if I'm interested, I ask them to send me a chapter or three chapters so I can get a feel what the writing style is like. And then if I still like it, I'll ask for the whole thing and I will give them some ideas. If it's not something that I can take right now, Mm -hmm. I might give them some ideas like, why don't you join a writer's group and get some feedback and share ideas with other writers? Those help you grow so much and then resubmit or try again. Or Mm -hmm. if I see something very specific, like, hey, you never use pronouns, then I'll give them those helpful hints so they can work on it. Okay. And then, so, so let's say that, you know, they've, they've submitted something and and you do like it. Are you, do you act as uh, like an editor first or do you have editors that you work with and then send them through the process? Um, Everything is included in the price they pay me. So sometimes I will, I read absolutely everything, Mm -hmm. but then depending on my workload, sometimes I'll pass it off to a copy editor to work with. I gotcha. And then in general, 
um, let's say from the you know the moment they submit a manuscript to you till when it's actually published, is there an average amount of time that it takes for this? Depending on how well, of course, what kind of book it is. But if we're right. just talking like a novel, sure, and they're pretty quick about uh, about getting back with me, mm-hmm. then I would say we could usually do it in three to four months. Oh, okay, that's really yeah. fast. It is much faster with a hybrid just because of volume. I mean, there's there's fewer that I handle at any one time, and I'm not trying to compete with – like I don't have two softball books that I have to deconflict when they come out. Oh, sure. Okay. So when you're, when you're working with authors, how do you help them push past writer's block? I don't believe in writer's block. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well that's that's one way to approach it. Why? So it's, why don't you why don't you leave in writer's block? I'm just in denial. I don't know. I don't have trouble with writer's block because I have so many ideas in my head. My problem is really making the time to write, to actually sitting down and doing it. Mm-hmm. But going back to talking to my writers, typically. If it's a novel and they're coming to me, it's already done. So we're past the writer's block idea anyway. Right. Okay. They do what they do get frustrated with is it's their baby. And trust me, I get frustrated with this when I deal with my editor, you know, because I can't edit my own books. Mm -hmm. So I give my stuff to an editor and it's hard to let go. It's easier when you're on your ninth book, but (laughs) it's harder at the beginning to let go because you think, man, this is great. I did my best work. And then there's somebody going, yeah, but I don't quite understand this or that, or I think you should tweak this. And then people get their feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. And that makes it tough. That's why you really have to like your editor Mm -hmm. or your agent, depending on which way you go with this, Mm -hmm. because an agent will kind of give you the same kind of feedback. Sure. So do you have any tips on how to find a good editor Word of mouth really is probably the best. If you can find somebody that know that knows somebody that's already used them. Okay. You can look on the internet, but you never know. Um, so you always want to ask for referrals. Uh, there are different writing groups that you can join. Then you can share ideas amongst those other writers. Okay. Like I'm a member of Chesapeake Bay Writers or James River Writers. You know, there's a few different ones like that, but don't use Fiverr. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not for editing or not for, for editing or for anything in general. Oh, no, no. There are definitely some good things that Fiverr is good for. <laughs> okay. Editing is just not one of them. Sure. Why Your English is teacher is not. Well, why is Fiverr not good for editing? Yeah, because. And actually, that kind of ties in with what I was going to say in your your school teacher should not be your editor, even if they're an English teacher, mm-hmm. because they're not unless they're trained to be an editor. There are certain silly rules that they don't follow in high school. They don't even follow them in college. Hmm. Uh, there's little tricks and a general reader might not notice, but they would notice if it was wrong. They just wouldn't notice why right. it was wrong. Okay. Uh, that's why your mother can't edit for you, not your sister, not your English teacher. As a matter of fact, I tell people it's great to have them read early on, mm-hmm. but they're not editors. And even when it comes to stories like novels, you need to get beta readers, which are people that don't have any skin in the game for you. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, they're going to give it to you straight because they're going to find plot holes that your somebody that is very close to you will not catch. Right. For example, my sister and my mother, they lived through the scary time with my stalker with me. Mm-hmm. So when they're reading my story, if I miss something, they just filled in the blanks because they already knew what happened. Does that make sense? Even though yeah. it wasn't written there, it they understood what I was saying. You right. need an outsider. Gotcha. Gotcha. You, yeah. Someone who's not associated with it so they can read it like somebody with a fresh pair of eyes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to get more information about all the different types of publishing, you can go get my book, The Road to Publishing, and it will answer a lot of your questions. Excellent. Thank you. 
So tell me more about your involvement with the Williamsburg Book Festival. This is my second year as the president of the Williamsburg Book Festival. It is the 5th of October from 10 to 4 in Williamsburg, Virginia. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. We've got over 40 authors coming in from all over to set up and sell their books, pitch their books, but it gives people the chance to talk to them, uh, writers or readers, both. We have free uh, panel discussions and talks going on throughout the day. One is a panel of women authors, a couple. Um, we have narrative nonfiction and historical fiction writers. And then our headliner is Catherine Locke out of Pennsylvania. And she is a young adult writer, which I don't think that they've had before for the Williamsburg Book Festival. And she is actually going to go in and talk to some of the high schools on the Friday before. Mm-hmm. So I'm very excited about that. Oh, wonderful. If So I know you, so you said it's October 5th, which is coming up. Um, mm-hmm. I'm guessing you've already accepted all the authors you're going to accept for this year's festival. Is that correct? We did. Thank you. Okay. We jury. We jury our books, which means new authors have to actually submit a copy of a book so we can look at it. Okay. And we accept applications in May and the jury the books in June and then tell everybody by the end of June whether or not they're in. Okay. So somebody, I guess in theory, could uh, a new author could submit in May 2020. Is that correct? Correct. The next correct. And we would love that. Okay. And so where do you, where would somebody go? to submit a book and do you have to send a, a hard copy or could you also send an ebook copy? Not an ebook. It okay. needs to be a printed copy. And it's WimsburgBookFestival.org and it has the application processes on there and it has the the mailing address to send books to. Okay, wonderful. And then and what kind of genres do you accept at the festival? Pretty much anything. Okay. We'd like to have a wide variety. Now, it is family-friendly, so we take that into account. <laughs> but besides that, pretty much anything. Okay. Excellent. So, Don, with everything that you've done and experienced so far, what would you say has been the best advice that you've ever received? Don't look back. When I was getting ready to separate from the military, retire, try to figure out what I wanted to do. You know, I was right on that edge. I wasn't sure what to do. And my boss said, whatever decision you make, just don't look back. Press ahead. Make the most of your life. And it's worked great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, So, again, thank you so much, Don. This has been an absolute pleasure. I, I do appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. If the listeners would like to buy your books, see more about your writing, see more about what you're up to, where are the best places they can go for that? Blue-Dragon-Publishing.com and DawnBrothertonAuthor.com. Okay, excellent. I will and of course, I'll be at the book festival. And more again, the book festival. Okay, great. I'll put that too. So I'll put those three links in the show notes so people can click right through and hopefully some of the listeners can come in October and find you at the book festival. That'd be wonderful. Thank you. Excellent. Well, again, thank you so much, Don. This is an absolute pleasure. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Advance Your Hour podcast. If you like this episode, please go into iTunes and give us a five-star rating. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button so that every single time I release a new episode, it will go directly to you without even thinking about it. If you're interested in hearing older episodes, please go to AdvanceYourArt.com where you can find the catalog of everything I've done so far, as well as contact information and projects I'm working on. Thank you again, and have a great day.